Last week, I took a deep dive into some of the world record runs on Knocked Aaron Toten. We took a look at some of the best strategies across Black Ops 1 and World at War. We analyzed the strategies, explained why they worked, and the various merits to each strategy. The response to the video was amazing. I got 50,000 views in the first five days in spite of the fact that people like Astro Dan told me my channel was dead. A lot of people in the comments even mentioned that they were really looking forward to the series as well as the next episode. The response was incredibly encouraging. And today we'll be taking a look at some of the various high round runs and world record runs on Verrucht across multiple Call of Duties. Before I get into Verrucht, I think we should first actually talk about insta-kill rounds real fast. A lot of people were confused when they saw players killing Zombie so easily at insanely high rounds. What's going on here is known as the insta-kill round bug, and insta-kill rounds play a huge role in high round runs in World at War and Black Ops 1. In my last video, I just kind of assumed that everybody was familiar with the concept, but after reading the comments, like that clearly wasn't the case. With insta-kill rounds, you're able to easily kill zombies on various rounds with almost every single weapon instantly. It starts at round 163 and alternates between insta-kill rounds and normal zombie health rounds for several rounds. After that, they start appearing a bit sporadically and random. What's going on here is that the zombie's health becomes so large that you get what's called an integer overflow. The zombie's health actually becomes negative. Then when you go to shoot a zombie, the game sees that the zombie has negative health, realizes that's not right, and kills the zombie. I actually explain the insta-kill bug in a video I made almost a year ago. In this video, I take a look at some of the game's code and explain the math that's happening behind the scenes. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video if you want to check it out yourself and get a much better understanding of the insta-kill round bug. Just know that when you see players killing zombies incredibly easily, this isn't them cheating. It's because of a bug in how zombies' health is calculated. With that out of the way, let's take a look at some of the best runs in Verrucht. Let's kick things off by checking out this run from Jim4495, and this is the highest round ever achieved on Verrucht. He managed to reach round 1318 after 20 hours of play. Of course, there are only 24 zombies per round in this run, which is what allows him to get to such a high number, but it's still a crazy bit of dedication. His strategy is basically just a camping strategy, but it's slightly more contained. So it starts off, most rounds begin in this little corner right here. He'll start to shoot some zombies, see if it's an insta-kill round, and if it's not, he'll flip the power switch right there and activate the trap. Then all he needs to do is just guard this little window right here. And he basically doesn't need to worry about the other entrances because the traps manage to kill the zombies and he just needs to watch this window and make sure that they don't get in. The problem though is that if the zombies do manage to get out of this window, then it's going to be him and the zombies in this little contained room. But you'll see the power trap has turned off and the only zombie left really is this zombie in the window right here. He can take care of that zombie and then the round will be over. Simple as that. That's all you really need to do. Sometimes though what he'll find is that there are too many zombies spawning at that window and he'll actually have to let them break in and manage to get away but for the most part it's simple as that. Now he has a sense that this round will be an insta-kill round so he's not actually going to that little corner right there but he'll start throwing some grenades chucking them down, they'll explode, kill the zombies, and he's already now most of the way through the round. He basically just has to camp here. It's actually an incredibly easy strategy. He hardly ever leaves this balcony right here. And he can just mow them off with the flamethrower, the grenades, or the MP40 that he's got right there. It's simple as that. And once the zombies are under control, he can kind of jump ahead and shoot them there. It's honestly an incredibly easy strategy. Now, what ends up actually being a problem, though, is sometimes when too many zombies come spawning through this window and he's not able to contain them. You see, what happens in some games is that the zombies will break through and he just kind of has to go a little bit slower. And then he can wait for the trap to turn off and then escape and do a couple loops around this area right here, killing the zombies with the flamethrower and then the round is over but you'll see at round 1318 his final round 
he's not able to contain the window as well as he'd like. He pulls the trap right there, starts spraying the zombies, but you'll see four or five zombies are already at this window right now. They're tearing it down. He's not able to rebuild fast enough, and one zombie gets through. Now, once that one zombie gets through, he has to move. The trap will do its job and protect him from every other zombie in the map, but now he's in this little confined area with just one zombie, and he's hoping he can kill it fast enough, but he's not. The trap is on, so he has nowhere else to run, because if he runs through there, he's already down and he's going to go down he gets killed and then boom game over the world record for Varukt is set 1318 but because he wasn't able to contain that window as well as he'd like he ended up going down and that's the tricky part about this strategy you saw earlier the rounds are actually really easy to fly through but if you make a mistake, if you are unable to properly secure that window when you get a little too overwhelmed in this room then you will go down. And when you consider that you're playing this game for 1,318 rounds, after 1,000 tries, you're probably going to make a mistake along the way. It's just a matter of how long you can keep going without making that mistake of keeping that window contained. That's the key to the strategy right here. But for Jim, 4495, he was able to do it long enough that he set the world record. So congrats to him. So this strategy only works if you're limited to 24 zombies per round. But if you're not, you have to try a different strategy. And the most common strategy on Varukt is to run a route, since there isn't that much space to train. A route typically consists of you going from different ends of the maps and pulling traps along the way. And this is what Phoenix did when he set the Black Ops 1 Varukt world record of around 206. Before we get into this strategy, though, I thought you guys might find it interesting just to look at the progression of this game. To get to round 30, it took him about 34 minutes. And this is basically running at a pace of one round every minute. It took him one hour and 49 minutes to get to round 50. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it's actually impressive to get a sub two hour round 50 run. Most round 50 runs when people are playing casually will take you about four hours. It took him 12 hours to get to round 100. It took him 49 hours to get to round 163, which may sound arbitrary, but round 163 is when insta-kill rounds begin. And then it took him 76 hours just to get to round 200. If you graph this progression, it looks like this, and you'll see it really starts to flatten out, which is why some of these rounds take forever. I mean, you have rounds that are lasting 30 to 46 minutes, which is insane. Uh, the strategy on this map is a mix of camping and running routes. When it's an insta-kill round, he camps by mule kick. And you'll notice that he keeps the stairway behind him closed. What this does is limit the areas in which zombies can come from, which is essentially the windows to his right, the window with the hole in the wall to his left further down the room, and then the quick revive room. The zombies can only come from that area. If he opens up the stairway behind him, then this gives him less room to work with. The zombies can come running down the stairs, and he can, for example, as you'll see him do a lot, make breaks for grenades, and he's throwing grenades everywhere because it's an easy way to kill just multiple zombies in a single area when you know they're almost guaranteed to kill why not throw them this is a pretty easy strategy the only thing i'll say that makes this strategy harder than say camping in verrooked on um, say like we did in the previous run in world at war is that you just have so many zombies like these rounds even though you have insta kill still feel like they take forever because they just keep coming and coming and coming and Honestly, you do have to make sure you don't make that many mistakes when you're doing this. It's easy to kill the zombies, but with so many zombies coming at you, it's also easy to eventually make a mistake. But he's able to do so for quite a while, and that's what allows this run to continue extending. When he's not camping, what he ends up doing is going upstairs and running a route. He starts in the butcher's room, and he has a bunch of zombies pour out of this window right here. I want to first apologize for the lag in this gameplay. This isn't entirely my fault. This is just based off of how he records it, but he lets the zombies run through. He takes them into this room over here. You'll notice that the stairway is closed, and then once he has the zombies hoarded up, he just pulls the trap and lets them die right here. Now, this is a tricky spot he's in right now because he can continue to let the zombies spawn, and then they'll die from the trap, 
But if too many spawn in, then he might not be able to make another break across the map. You'll see they're already pouring in from that window right here. So he's going to let those zombies pile up. He wants to keep moving so that the zombies spawn behind him, not in front of him, especially when he's moving through tight doorways like this. But once he gets to the power room, he's pretty much home free for what he wants to do next. He's going to round up the zombies right there, make sure he has all of them, and he's making a break for the balcony that we saw implemented in the previous strategy. He is then going to kill the zombies as if he was doing that other strategy in World at War. And sometimes he will also board up the window right there, but you'll see in that case he was able to complete the round. He has a hunch that insta-kill rounds are coming, and he's going to make a break for this area right here and begin camping. This is your basic strategy. It's rinse and repeat. You run from the butcher's room and go use the trap by the staircase. And then once those zombies are done, you kill them by the balcony. Go back and forth, back and forth. And eventually, after 30 to 45 minutes, you get through the round. And then you can go back to camping once it's an insta-kill round. If you were curious, the strategy also works in Black Ops 3. And it's what Maxi used to reach round 135, which was the previous classic Gobblegum's only world record on Verrooked. Although you'll notice that he doesn't need to worry about camping since there are no insta-kill rounds, and as a result, he's able to open up the stairwell and use that Thompson room, which gives him a bit more space to train. Sometimes when things are a little too crowded, he'll go down that stairwell, round up the zombies, and then take them up the staircase to kill them in the trap. This is one of the ways you can do it, but this route right here is basically the main strategy in Verrooked if you're playing a game that has more than 24 zombies per round. There are some other strategies, for example, camping in the butcher's room, but that requires the use of excessive gobble gums and some people just don't have those gobble gums on hand or it doesn't make sense to use so many gobble gums like that in a run that you're going for a world record since it may take multiple attempts to do so it's not as economical to use some of these cobble gum strategies although they can actually be faster and efficient ways to get to high rounds I'm considering actually making a video in the future talking about gobblegum strategies because they really break how people approach high round runs. They're just not always the most sustainable if you're trying to consistently set world records. Anyway, this has been a look at some of the best strategies in Verrooked. If you enjoyed this video, maybe give it a like, possibly subscribe for more. I'm going to be continuing to cover some of the best runs and strategies we've ever seen in COD Zombies. So if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy the next one. Have a wonderful day. And bye.